opportunity a world war I have to make this welcome address to all of you. You know, Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World is an international body. Many of us do not know about us, many of us know us. Our headquarters is actually in Dresden, Italy. So, we have national chapters, so here we have Nigerian chapter, and we also have institutional chapters. So, the University of Port Harcourt is an institutional chapter, so we call ourselves a branch. We are the president. We set out because of the poor narratives around the performance of women in numbers in this science. Field of science, or the broader step, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicine. So we found that this difficult water has more males than females. So we gather, put ourselves together to have a synergy, to share our stories. We have a lot of bias, nuances, okay, around our culture where women should be. Women should have some career that are peculiar to them. But we are trying to change the narratives, showing what women can do, creating robust evidence that can influence policies around gender. And when we started our career like the ages of the girls before us today, we didn't have a lot of mentors, we didn't have a lot of women we can see as heroines and role models. So we think it's wise to come together bring our uh, expertise and bring these girls on board. So while they interact with us, they've been with us since Friday. They have been interacting with professors, doctors, directors of centers in the university. Even the upper president has been with us. So these women have been with these girls, sharing with them the passion even we told them a lot about our research and how our research output can connect with the society. And that strengthened what they have in mind becoming in future. So these girls, we have met them to get into this rare field of physical science. The chairman has organized a beautiful team that have put them through coding and robotics. And the essence is to charge their brain. While they're learning from mentors, because now we're sharing our phone numbers with them, they can call us about their career needs, beside their parents and their teachers and their principals. It's amazing that we wanted the teachers to drop them off and go home, but they found the project very attractive. And all the teachers decided to stay back, and we had to make their own classrooms where they also join in the code. It's coming with a round of applause for the teachers. So, we believe that we challenge their brain to become innovative because robotics, making robots and using robots available to give a command that can deliver tasks and make it less hectic for humans. They have set their brain in the photo shoot, you see a lot of projects they have done within the three days. This is the beginning of this phase, and we hope to have more of these in the series we have started today. And with the effort of the Honorable Commissioner for Education today, we know that this project will remain sustainable in our states, and other states can begin to learn from us how to work with these people. And it's important to state that these children you're seeing here from over 13 secondary schools in River State went to selection to be here. So they are winners, I told them, even if they don't emerge final winners today, not all of them will be winners today, but they are winners from their schools. Because my team went to the different schools to, to conduct aptitude tests from where they emanated from where they emerged the winners to per school. And you can see that it was a fair process. I also learned how to code so I can support the students as a biochemist. But today, I have learned how to develop my web page. Thanks to the team, both of them. So I am really very happy to welcome all of you where the women are very devoted. Like I said, I'm a biochemist, and some of us, uh, in plant science 
uh, design laboratory technology, they have all come together to learn these aspects of science, the physical science, to be able to help our children and also develop skills to further marketing of our research outputs. So welcome and enjoy what we have. It's really going to be a short one because we are not done with our exercises in robotics. So immediately after this ceremony, our children will remain with us till 4 p.m. So we are not keeping you for a long time. After you have gone, our children will stay with us till 4 p.m. So sit back and relax with us and also give us the best ideas and suggestions to keep the organization forward. Thank you for your hands of collaboration. This is Bishop Davis and gentlemen. It's indeed my singular honor and privilege the opportunity to be with you today. I do not despise little beginnings. I know that I have other commitments at this time, but I thought that I should honor this event. But Girl Child Education is a specialized area that we are looking to sustain. And so I feel pleased to see a group of young scientists as but the president has explained who are determined to present themselves as role models for the up and coming generation. They are doing it for the up and coming generation. They are doing it for you. And I thought I want to thank them for this noble effort. Because think about it. We believe very sincerely that educating the dead child is indeed a very critical thing that we need to do as the people. Far too long, female education has been neglected. It has come a long way, but we're still not there. And so every organization, every agency that aims to Further the interest of girl child education, we stand ready to encourage you as we are able to. And so, this is the reason why I have come here and uh, I want to congratulate all of you that have passed through the crucible, all of you that uh, have been selected, you made it for your various schools and you have come here today. I want to tell you that members of this organization from every education, they love you. The State Minister of Education loves you and we hope that you will make good time, of, uh, make good use of your time in this place. I will look forward to you becoming as one of the members of this organization that have so kindly got here a couple of days ago and have come to our pledge, our continued support for all your activities. Thank you so very much. I am a medical doctor, two term HOD of the Department of Pharmacology, currently serving. I have dwelled and dwelt in science for well over 20 years. So, for me, this opportunity was something I, I thought was extremely important. I am so impressed at how the society was able to put this together and the cost. I was particularly impressed by the cost. I know what coding is in the times we live in, and I had made inquiries of even telling my girls to go and partake in it. So when I heard about this, I had to call the president and say, Please, my daughter has to join me. And that's how she came on board. I want to encourage you, the young ones, keep at it. There is no, um, there is nothing hidden in science anymore. It's not that difficult. When I went to school, we were 205 in the medical school, and we were less than 20 women in that class. Today, in my medical school, I have about 130 in my class, and the number is equal. Same for females, same for males. There is no more any bias for the females. So females are now important. 
together where you can go out and explore the science field. I want to thank the members of the organization and hope that this wouldn't just be a one-off session. Perhaps we could make it a repeated one so that the children can continue to improve. What they gain would not be very easily lost. I also want to thank you because my daughter came home and said to me, what do you know I can set up a website? I was very, very impressed. So please keep doing what you're doing. We will continue to encourage and support you, both as the Women Association and as individuals. Thank you. sounds and this sound 
bounce back and he receives those sound waves. And that's how he knows that there's an object in front of it. But if there's no object then the sound waves don't bounce back. This is an infrared sensor or an IR sensor. It contains infrared lights. Infrared lights are lights that we can't see. This infrared sensor reflects lights by and it helps this robot to know when to move and when to stop by using the principle that black absorbs and white reflects light. So when this robot is placed on the ground and wants to move, this infrared sensor releases light and if the light is absorbed by the black, it knows to keep moving. But if it reflects, then it knows that the surface is white and it shouldn't move. This robot also contains what we call the microcontroller, also known as the Arduino. The microcontroller is where the code is being put, which contains all the instructions that in which the robot is going to perform. This robot also contains the battery, which powers the robot. This is the battery. The robot contains the battery which powers the whole system. It also, it also contains a Bluetooth. A Bluetooth is the wireless connection, which, is, which the body contains a Bluetooth module and the phone, the device used to pass the instruction, contains the Bluetooth module. And the phone is used to send commands to the robot. Thank you. There's a red light here that's still blinking, showing that it hasn't been heard. But when it's fed, the red light becomes stable. That's how you know that robot car has been fed. <laughs> so we're going to show how the um, robotic car tra tra follows the line that is black. So as you can see, the robotic car keeps going and following the black line round. But if it comes out of this line or reaches the end, as it will stop. As you can see, the car stopped. Thank you. Very much so the children have been able to present what they teach, both in web design and robotics. So we have a second card demonstration. So this is able to navigate through a curve line. Come on. Okay. 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 Good morning everyone. My name is Ola Bibiti. Good morning, everyone. Yes. My name is Kowal Abibiti. I'm from Community Secondary School, Mekini. And with me are my fellow group members. My name is Christopher Paper, and I'm from First Black College. My name is Olo Dissoptis, and I'm from Banabio International School. My name is Abu Nesinti, I'm from Tenapu International School. My name is Chris Olumi, and I'm from Tenapu International School. And to talk about the parts and functions of the robot. This is a robotic car and it has several parts. This is the ultrasonic sensors. And the ultrasonic sensor has two parts, the echo and the trick. The trick sends out sounds to check if there's any obstacle. And if there's an obstacle, it's, the sound bounces back to the echo. But if there's no obstacle, the sound doesn't come back. And also have the servo motor which helps to move the ultrasonic sensor to check if there is an obstacle in front, behind or beside it. This is the infrared, this is the red board, sorry. And this is the infrared receiver and this is the infrared transmitter. The infrared transmitter sends light, sends data through light to the infrared receiver. 
to influence about to control the movements. that they are able to rotate the vehicle, okay, so that's a different dimension of movement. The first one controls the robotic car using a phone and they are using an infrared uh, transmitter and receiver. The normal remote will use power television. That's what they are using to control the robotic car. Okay. So thank you. And for you to know that it's not just secondary school children that learn robotics. We have a primary school child here to tell us what she learned in robotics. By man to help in various various things like like in factories and hospitals. They also help humans go to different places where we know that our bodies cannot take the pressure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So can we have our seats now that the VC have been fed with our activities? And now address us. I appreciate the organization for women and science for the developing world, equal branch, for putting this together. You know, it has always been an all males affair. But recently, when I say recently, I say like 30, 40 years back, I said believing that women, if given the opportunity, they will definitely make the world a better place. During the COVID era, if you all agree with me, there were just about four countries that were not affected by the COVID-19 thing. And those countries had females as their president. Two of us. You know? So I want to encourage you. I want to tell you that the only difference between you and a man is biology. You can do anything. These days, we have female pilots, we are female astronauts, we are female engineers. In fact, if you go to the police station, if, if you go to the mechanic workshop before Juma police station, that's an engineering, a civil a mechanical engineering student, a girl who works there. I think she's graduated and she started working there. And I tell you, most people take their cars to her because they get very good results. Because she's patient with the cars, she doesn't take four cars at once to work on them to maximize profit. She deals well with your car and gives you the best of it. So I really believe that women have a lot of role to play in the development of sciences and society as a well. whole. Like I said, I want to encourage organizations for women in science for putting this together. Because this, <clears throat> this program, it has brought back or exposed irregularities in gender differentiation, which the women are trying to cover up. Thank you very much. So tell us your school. Congratulations. As a for this coding.
Coding Robotics Bootcamp 2021 by the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World, University of Paracord Branch. You are the overall winner. So can you make response? Can you say something to the public? First of all, I say thank you for the organization, for making it possible for me to be here, and also thank God for making me the overall winner. Thank you. Thank you. Is it hard? What a man can do, they say. Thank you. We also have a uh, thank you, sir. We want to invite um, Dr. Tobison Briggs, the director of OTI, Offshore Technologies Institute, to make presentation to our two young male champions. Dr. Briggs, please. Now we are campaigning for male champions, male who champion the causes of women. These males, they don't charge us money, they just give us service free, and they are there for us. They are young people. So we want to appreciate them in a very little way. The first is Mr. Aswelleme Peter Omonige. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the contribution to the success of this program, the training of children on ICTC, especially in the artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Kufire Ebo. <laughs> Same thing. Um, thank you very much for your contribution to make this program successful. Uh, I appreciate you this talking. I would want to address the students. Could you please stand on your feet? The students that participated. We have been saying a lot of things to you, and you've been talking to us while you were sitting down here. The message is you are living in a world, particularly Nigeria, where almost everything is genderized. We have subjects we reserve for men, and we think that women don't have any right to break into that mold. So we have a format. But here you are saying, excuse me, sir, I don't fit into that your format. I'm going to break through. Is that what you're telling me? Are you serious about it? Yes, are you going to stick to the format that tells you who you will be and where you should be? No, you are saying I'm a 21st century girl. I can go where I please. Yeah. We lit a little flame, just like you're giving in, uh, during baptism. And we're asking you, do not let this flame go out. Not join. Develop interest in technology. That is what we are talking about when we say this is a knowledge-driven economy. What you have shown today is your baseline, and you're not going to stop there. Go beyond it. Go beyond it. We are talking about cars that don't need drivers anymore. That's the rudiment of it. You started it. Sensors that can detect when there are objects by the side, in front of you, behind you. Once you can do that, the next thing you should begin to think, how can we make this car always detect things that and drive through? We don't have the streets now, but there is the streets we've got. And when the streets are there, you are the ones that are going to give us our eco-friendly cars. Thank you so much, Anwar.
by what just happened. Um, like the VC's representative, it's a world of um, the men always, but um, slowly over the centuries and recently the women are taking over, becoming presidents, becoming uh, leaders, becoming astronauts, becoming leaders in the scientific world, becoming what God had made them to be, not as um, subject to the men, even though the Bible says they should be submissive, but submission is not subjection. So not as subject to the men, but standing side by side to the men to be what God had destined them to be, to follow their dreams. And we are talking about the, their dreams in science, their dreams in becoming um, uh, world scientists, innovators, creators in this um, era of artificial intelligence. As we see in um, the developed world, you see women becoming astronauts, becoming big time pilots. That's what we want to see our girls, our young African girls become, not just to finish school, um, you know, the hype in the African world is becoming a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer. Those are the major things. But there are scientific innovations, creations that are coming up in the artificial intelligence technology. Yeah.